Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fair Lady. Now you'll notice there that the Fair Lady is up in the air on the hoist, because I'm about to embark on some work underneath it. And what I'm doing specifically, folks, is I'm starting all of the uh, under tray work and all of the air ducting around the intercoolers, in the front, everywhere else. So, big job. Uh, lots of work involved in it to get it right. If you remember from one of the first videos that I did, the stuff that was on the car originally, it was a real joke. It looked like it had been built by a child with a pair of tin snips. It was just the most ridiculous, horrendous thing you've ever seen in your life. But anyway, I digress. Let's move in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm up to. So now that I've got pretty much everything in the front uh, that I need to put in there and I've got everything where it needs to be, yeah, there's a couple of hoses to tidy up and stuff, but basically everything's there and we can now start to work out how to sort of close this up. There is a few issues I've already spotted with various things, but we'll go over those as they sort of show themselves, you know. Uh, you'll notice here there's a piece of uh, 25 by 25 galvanized steel that I've actually got bolted to, uh, under that front apron there. Uh, it's just a temporary thing. It's part of my sort of setup. Uh, that I'm doing just to give me positions and heights on stuff. I'm trying to build a completely flat under tray that goes from here all the way back to the uh, to the engine cross member. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, I've got ideas in my head of what I'm doing, but really it's probably going to work itself out, which a lot of things do as you sort of start making them. Certain things become quite obvious and you often have to change your ideas on you know exactly what you're going to do so you can't be too set in your ways folks when you're starting on something like this if you haven't done a similar thing before on a vehicle like this uh, i've done work like this before on on other vehicles uh but not this one so you know it's a bit of a clean slate for me so you'll notice down that end of the shed there's a nice big piece of aluminium sheet that i'll be using to make all this stuff with and just here on the floor below me that is the actual front under tray that was on the car when i bought it minus the pieces of cardboard that are masking taped onto the end of it of course now it's you know filthy horrible bloody thing it's only about oh, it's only about half a mil i think it's just like an aluminium can almost it's really thin flimsy garbage it's just bloody terrible uh, way too thin for something like this. It doesn't hold its own shape. It's and it's just garbage. It's it's cut to the wrong sizes, and you know it was typical of all the crap that was on this thing. So basically, all it's good for is is a mock up. I thought, oh, how am I going to fill this up? I need a big piece of cardboard. And I thought, oh, that crappy under tray is still out the back in amongst the rubbish. I'll I'll go and grab that and just I'll just tape bits of cardboard to it. So that's where I am with it, folks. I've sort of got some bits taped to it, and. Um, I know where I sort of am with this, so I'm just starting to progress through it. This is my first template, and I'm actually going to cut a piece of aluminium sheet off this. I'm actually going to be going from that point there across to that point there. So it'll be basically a bit of a straight line across that side there. And this template, fortunately, is um, slightly oversized, so I have got room to trim bits off it. So I'm pretty confident cutting a piece of aluminium sheet off it which will need to be trimmed again but the biggest drama with stuff like this is you don't want to cut something that ends up being too small that you can't use you know so you know just a bit of a bit of a thing so i'll get into this folks i'll get my first bit of sheet cut out sit it up in position and i'll have a bit of a chat to you then it'll, it'll give you a bit more idea of what i'm actually trying to work at if there's something uh, a bit better to look at so um that's where I'm working, folks. I'll get a bit done, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, folks, I'm back, and I have made a little bit of progress. Now, the first thing you'll notice up there is the front lip is missing off the front bar. Now, this was one of those things that I said there were a few issues with, but I'll touch on them as they make themselves known. Now, the issue with the front lip was... After measuring up the front bar in relation to the front apron of the car and the front chassis, it appeared that the front lip is angled out like this to match the front bar on the, on the bottom, you know, like it's angled out like that. But one side is actually angled out heaps. And what that was doing is pushing the front bar 
out on the passenger side sort of at the bottom like really kicking it out and I couldn't get anything to line up so the only alternative was to uh, get that front lip off. Now that was um, held on with urethane and if you've ever had to take anything apart that's been urethane together you'll be able to feel my pain. It took me four hours to get that off and it was not pleasant folks it was not pleasant and it was touch and go whether i was either going to break the front bar or break the lip at any stage you know but fortunately i, got, I did it i managed to get it off so what i'm gonna to have to do now folks is uh when the time comes you can see it um just there i'm gonna to have to probably cut it and fit it to the right shape and refiberglass it i would say that the front lip was fitted to the bar without it being on a car because it did fit, but just the angles are wrong, you know. You would have had to, um, like I say, you would have had to stretch the bar out to make it fit the front lip. And that's all well and good, but it doesn't fit the car. That bar wasn't on the car when I bought it. The car did have a bar on it, but it was quite badly damaged. And that actually came with the car. As here you go, here's a replacement, you know, bar in good condition that's got a lip on it, which I was very grateful for. So now that I've got that off, I can pull the bar around at the bottom to where it needs to be. Um, this thing, when I bought it, it didn't have uh, any inner guards in it at all. Um, so it was really hard to tell where everything sort of went or, or even where everything goes. I've managed to, to track down guard liners and uh, front sections that go behind the inner coolers. So at least I've got something now that I've got holes that I can line up with to give me measurements to push the bar in and out of the front. So I know that I'm actually setting all this up in the right spot. So we'll go underneath folks and I'll show you where I'm up to with it. So what I have on here now folks is another piece. Initially when I was just first measuring this up, I mentioned I had a piece of 25 by 25, just some gal box section bolted onto there, just that I was using as sort of an aid to help me get measurements and lines through and everything. This is a piece of uh, 20 by 20 by maybe 1.6 or 1.2 aluminium box section. And it's fixed onto this uh, front apron with uh, three 6mm bolts. Now they go into existing holes on the front apron. There's one either end and one in the middle. And between those I have like a 6mm um, a mudguard washer, which helps to get this back to being nice and straight because this... Like on a lot of the 300ZXs, this has been pushed up slightly in the middle from someone uh, hitting it with a floor jack. Only very slightly though, very slightly. So this just helps me get it all kind of back really straight. And it also keeps the aluminium off the, uh, the steel chassis a bit to reduce the amount of surface area that's going to react with the dissimilar metals. Uh, and then to that, I've then fitted four rib nuts. One, two, and then two on the other side. So four rib nuts, which I can now bolt up to. Now this falls in line perfectly with the, the, the lip of the bar and then sort of goes through. Uh, it actually will clear here. So I can, instead of having to go up to this under the front apron and then make cutouts for this and put all sorts of steps in this front panel, I can do it in one completely flat piece. And I'm not going below anything um, that there wouldn't already be things at that height. So I'll, when I get this piece in, I'll show you folks that I now have a completely flat front panel from, from outside of guard to outside of guard. And just back behind here, you can see it sitting on the ground. That's my new front panel there. You can see the size comparison to the front panel that was fitted to the car originally. It's obviously been cut for the plastic guard liners on the front, even though the vehicle didn't actually have any. God knows what happened to them. The last person who worked on the car probably didn't refit them like most things on this thing. So you can see that this has four holes here. One, two, three, four. They're the holes across there that line up with the rib nuts um, in that top piece. And all around the perimeter there, there are rib nuts that you can see. And there to secure the front bar into so i think i might bolt that in and we'll have another look at that at how i'm going to bridge the gap between the front under tray and the engine cross member
There you go folks, that's how it goes together. As you can see now, we have a completely flat under tray. I'll just pick this up and move you around a bit here. You can see we go from bar to bar on both sides where the uh, sort of front guards meet. And we go all the way across and we are completely flat. Now obviously some of that hardware is going to be changed. These are just sort of normal bolts here. They're going to be replaced either with a countersunk bolt or a, uh, you know, a button head bolt, something that's not lumpy bumpy like those are. So they're nice and smooth. That all works out pretty well now. I'm pretty happy with that. It's doing a really good job of keeping the front bar straight as well, which is, uh, you know, which is really good. And now that I've got that in there, folks, that actually forms the, the bottom and the base for all of the work in the front. So all of the work, all the sort of ducting and everything that's going to be going on in the front to uh, channel all the air into the side mount intercoolers, the radiator and the oil coolers and everything. Everything will be sort of coming down and fixing into that under tray. So it'll just be a really nice sort of a solid setup and it just gives us something where we now have fixings available or we can make fixings available in pretty any, any position that we want. So looking at it now from this side folks, you can see uh, obviously your radiator up there and you can see that we are pretty much uh, dead in line with the back of the radiator here. And then we just have a slight angle on either end where we come out and sort of meet the front bar. Now uh, that angle is so that it works with the um, the sort of inner guard there that goes onto that. I'll grab one on the other side and we'll have a bit of a look. See, so I can show you this one. So this will just kind of uh, go in something like this, folks. Holding it with one hand. Let's see if I can make it stay there. Stay. All right. So that's how that's going to go, folks. I'll do a bit of work down the bottom here so that I can bolt all this sort of together, whether I have to sandwich a piece of aluminium or something between it, just so I retain these uh, these plastic inner guards here behind the intercoolers. And um, I will probably fit some, put some holes in down here to duck the air out of the intercooler. There is a, um, a sort of a small slit in the factory uh, piece, on, which is actually the bottom of this along here but I'll, I'll do something with that i might even put something um in this area up here i don't know I've, I've got to work that out but at least i've left myself in a position with something that i can work with um which is this to be able to tie these two together fairly easily which i think um sort of should be pretty good you can sort of see there how flat this is again along the bottom it's just real real nice so the next thing I've got to do, folks, is um, get from here across to the engine cross member. What I'm going to be doing here, guys, is I've got a piece of uh, angle here. So in 30 by 30, 3 mil. So I'm going to bolt that up there. There are three fixings here. One here, one here, and one here. I can't get to that one, so I'm, just, I'm happy to use just these two on the end. There's 6 mil. I'll put some Loctite on these when I put them in, but I'm going to um, fit this piece in here. And I'll probably actually rip this vertical part of the angle down. It doesn't need to be that tall. It's interfering a bit with this power steering hose. I'll possibly knock that down to 10 mil, so it'll be 30 on the bottom with a 10 mil spine coming up the back just to give it a bit of strength. I'll bolt that through, and then I'll put a series of rib nuts along it that will then take the aluminium panel that's going to go across here and bridge the gap. And I'm hoping to be able to extend that all the way through and maybe cut it around the sump a bit as well, actually go a fair way back on that, to get a bigger, flatter area, just to try and reduce even more of the turbulence. And how I'm going to finish it up on these sides, I really don't know yet. I'll sort of do that as I work my way along. I'd really like to be able to close these, um, these sides off completely and um, you know, be able to regulate the air myself, whether I decide to put some, um, some vents or some holes or something in them, in any of this at any point later on, at least once it's sealed up, I sort of then have complete control over where air will be moving um, in and out of all this area sort of through. But the first thing I've got to do is finish this. Like I say, I want to rip that down and then I want to bolt that up through there um, on a couple of washers, I think, 
to uh, help me get it sitting a bit better and then uh, I'll be able to move forward with that and then start making some cardboard templates across here, start building this thing basically out of cardboard until I'm happy with it and then I'll transfer it onto a bit of our sheet aluminium. So that's what I'm doing now folks. I'll put a few hours into this and I'll be back shortly. And that's that piece in now folks. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got uh, a 6mm countersunk stainless bolt in either end. I'll probably lock tight those when it's all done and I will uh, remove the sheet from that. So now it means that I can place rivnuts anywhere I want along that so I get plenty of fixings for the aluminium sheet that's going to be on here. Um, but first I have to work out what shape it's going to be but at least now I've got something that I can tape to um, that's, that's sort of going to help me out with uh, making it up out of cardboard folks. So uh, I'll get this cardboard template sorted which is probably going to take me a few hours and um, I'll come back when I've got something worth looking at. Right folks I'm back. And there it is. The template is pretty much complete. Let's have a bit of a look at it. So you can see basically what I've done here, folks, is I've completely enclosed uh, this area of the vehicle underneath the engine bay. So now going from our front under tray, across under the engine, and all the way back to the sort of gearbox. These sides are all enclosed. There are penetrations, obviously, for the lower control arms, sway bar, all that sort of stuff. There are original bolt holes. There's one up in here. There's a couple along here where I'm going to fold up and bolt into. So I've got plenty of fixings on the sides, on both sides. That piece under the center. And then I'm going to create a join here so that this one side is riveted. And then the other side will have uh, nuts and bolts with rib nuts, I would assume. So that I can uh, just unbolt this section in one piece from that section at the front. I won't need to remove this for things like oil changes. I've left enough room at the back here so I can um, get the oil filter out, which you can see that's where the oil filter will go up there. You can quite easily get a get a hand in there to, you know, get in and um, and get that oil filter off. And, uh, you know, your, your oil drain plug is still quite visible there. Same deal over this side, folks. Exactly the same, just completely closed up. So looking at it from the back, what we have is uh, two exhaust ports, I guess you'd call them, on the back now, uh, beside the gearbox on either side. And these are the only real way out uh, for air that enters the engine base through the radiator and the oil coolers. And there is plenty of room for air to get out. It's a little bit more congested on this side because of all the steering gear. But uh, there is still, hard to see with this folks, I can see a lot more in person than you guys can, it just sort of gets blocked, the light doesn't really get in there, but yeah there's plenty of room in there folks, and at least closing it up like this, it uh, gives me full control over airflow through the front, once all the ducting's done, I'm going to be building um, off this and you know attaching it to everything in there. We are then going to be able to control airflow in, and this allows us to control airflow out. And by being able to do that, we can reduce all the turbulence that's generated by air blowing out the sides on places like this and into the wheel wells and all that sort of stuff. So later on, I may possibly put some venting in this. I might stamp some fins or something in there maybe, or, you know, some vents or some holes or whatever. I don't know. I've, I've really got to get it to a point where everything's working and then I can uh, do a bit of testing on it you know check all the engine temperatures and all that sort of stuff you'd be surprised folks having it all closed in like that it may actually run cooler or I reckon it will run cooler with all that in place than without it it'll just be a much more efficient system anyway it's about time for me to get that all off and uh, flatten it out and reproduce it out of a sheet of aluminium We'll quickly go down the back and I'll show you um, where I'm set up down there and, and how it's kind of going. So this is uh, this is my little makeshift bench down here folks. You can see I've got a couple of, couple of trestle tables just sitting there. This big sheet of aluminium on. I've got a variety of uh, aluminium extrusions here. You know, angles of different sizes and thicknesses and 
squares and U shapes and T shapes and all sorts of various stuff that I'm using to create bracing and brackets and stuff out of for all this. And they're all just offcuts that I've had of stuff. I haven't actually had to buy any of this other than just the sheet. Generally when I make anything, I tend to buy more than I need just so that I've always got stuff on hand. Um, yeah, that's what I do anyway, folks. So um, enough of me crapping on. I'll get all that cardboard off. I'll flatten it out on this sheet of aluminium. We'll make that piece up and I'll give you a look at it once I've got it all folded up. So there's no need for me to show you this, folks. It's just put it down, mark around it with a bloody texture and uh, chop it out, bend it up and bob your uncle. So we'll do that and I'll be back. And that's our piece cut out there, folks. All we need to do now is just put a couple of bends in it and we can mount it up and see what it looks like. Unfortunately, bending that up was uh, outside of the scope of the equipment in the Aussie shed. But fortunately, I've got a mate that's got a real bender. So thanks, mate. And uh, let's go and fit this sucker up. I'm just about ready to bolt this up now, folks. Um, I've slightly revised this, uh, this mounting bracket brace across here. I managed to get a third fixing in along the center here. I just uh, riveted another piece onto this with some of these five mil aluminium rivets that I've been using on this and managed to get uh, a fixing back into that original um, threaded hole that's there. So I now have um, three full fixings with that piece. So that's super solid. And over this side here, uh, you can see I've riveted a, a piece of um, aluminium on the top of here. It's a bit of 50 by three, I think. So we're hanging over 25. The rivets run through the center, 12.5, and then the same on this side. You can see a couple of extra holes along here. Don't pay any attention to those, folks. This is actually a piece that I pulled off something else. I just had in the scrap there. A couple of extra holes in it isn't going to hurt anything. And in fact, it can be considered as weight saving. So you can see there's rib nuts uh, running along here that have been uh, applied with my handy dandy rib nut tool that I've got a video on me making, which I'll put a link to right there. Um, and the rest of it, I'm just using six mil button head bolts on this. So I've got most of the fixings here, six mil button head bolts, stainless, with a, um, a stainless washer on them. So I think we're pretty much ready to um, bolt the second part of this under tray up. All right. So bear with me, folks, while I get this bolted up. I will, however, try to work as fast as humanly possible. All right, let's get it bolted on. I've made these pieces up here, folks. These go uh, in this position here. This is where your steering rack comes through. You know, that's the right size for the uh, your rack boot, you know. It just, again, just fixes in with these same sort of bolts in here. Same deal, just these six mil stainless guys with washers on them. And this little slot that's on them, folks, this is the one for the other side. This is so that once it's in position, uh, you can unbolt it and slide it along the steering arm, move it, move it past the rack boot, and then just drop it through so you can remove that. And the whole idea is that is so that this bottom under tray, obviously, if you have a sealed penetration coming through, you're not going to be able to drop it down uh, because it'll be captured, you know. There's going to be a couple of, uh, probably one more rib nut in this. I'm actually running out of rib nuts, folks. I've used all my smooth uh, countersunk rib nuts. But uh, nearly had enough, nearly had enough. So I'll just throw this one on the other side, folks, and then uh, she's all bolted up. That's about it for our under tray, folks, in this, this part of it anyway. So as you can see, that sort of turned out pretty good. Reasonably happy with that. And I think it'll uh, provide the perfect base for 
uh, building all the ducting in the front and also being able to control leakage from the engine bay and also funneling the air in the correct position uh, under and out from under the car back here you can see there's uh you know these big square uh engine bay exhaust points i guess you'd sort of call them exhaust positions you can see it's quite a big open area so basically all of our um, engine bay air and heat will be funneling out of both sides there and that's coincidentally you know where the turbos are and everything and uh, a lot of our sort of heat sources will be now funneled down both sides without blasting into the wheel wells and into the brakes and all that sort of stuff um yeah, and as i mentioned you can still get to the oil filter so just to do basic services you can you can do oil filter changes and uh still get to your oil sump plug which is just there so overall folks i think i am pretty happy with that at this stage obviously there's still a little bit of work to do on it a bit of sort of testing and trial and error obviously this area here uh, behind the back of the inner cooler there's got to be some vents and stuff put on under here or cut out under here to uh, channel all the intercooler air uh, back out you know once it goes in through the front it's got to come out somewhere so that'll be the spot but um, yeah overall I think I'm pretty happy with that so if you made it through this far folks Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if uh, you'd like to sort of, you know, ask any questions about any of this. And as always, folks, um, I'll bloody well see you on the next one. Cheers.